Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video. In today's very special video, I'm going to be finally building the PC I've been planning and somewhat dreaming of for over a year. Six cores, 12 threads, 32 gigabytes of RAM, a 1250 watt power supply, just to name a few of the elements and parts in today's build. And the best of it, I'm going to be showing you how to build it and taking you along at the process with me. If you haven't seen part one, where I go over the parts used, the reasoning behind them, the rationale, justifications, and all that good stuff check that out in the card section now and in the description below but without any further ado let's get into this geekwatt video firstly you want to grab the case it can be quite heavy so be careful unscrew both the side panels and put them somewhere safe ideally in a case box or, or in another room just somewhere you're not going to stand on them they are incredibly hard uh, to source new ones of Next, you want to put the screws aside, ideally in a magnetic tray or dish. Uh, just make sure you don't lose them. This case, the Fantex N2 Pro, comes with a toolbox where you can store these. Now unpack the power supply and screw it into the case. This order may seem somewhat weird or peculiar, but it will make sense in just a moment's time. Use the screws to screw it in and wherever possible, place the fan in a downwards orientation so that it draws air from underneath the case and exhausts out the back of the power supply unit, creating its own thermal zone that doesn't negate and affect the rest of your system. I however have to face the power supply fan up, uh, exhausting air from the case and out the back of the unit due to the thick carpet in my room. Just make sure you power supply has room to breathe underneath your case and if not you'll need to go uh, for the, the alternative orientation. Now grab the power supply lead and plug one end into the wall and the other into the power supply. If your wall socket has a switch, turn it on and make sure the power supply switch is off. The reason for this is because you need to ground yourself as you build, putting your levels of static electricity and energy at that of the parts in the build in order to prevent damaging them because of static. It isn't half the problem it used to be, but better safe than sorry as they say. If you have an anti-static wrist strap, which I'd recommend in a room with carpet, simply follow the pre-existing steps. Uh, push off the strap on your wrist and clip the other end to any metal part of your case. Next, I'm going to install a couple of extra fans I had laying around uh, and move one of the fans already in the case. This case and most other cases come with a fan at the back, acting as an exhaust for air. The all-in-one liquid cooler I've gone for, the Neptune 120XR from Cooler Master, will be placed at the exhaust location, so I need to move the fan to the top of the case. Normally fans at the front and bottom would be intake fans, and fans at the top and back would be exhaust. However, I'm opting for a positive air pressure scenario, where more air is taken in and more passively exhaust, preventing dust uh, from entering into the case. Whilst this does lead in slightly uh, worse cooling, it does mean my PC is going to have less dust in it, uh, which is particularly a problem for me given my room that the PC is going to be residing in. Screwing in fans is super easy. Use the four screws that look like this and screw the fans in from the top. You'll need to take the front and top panels off the case like so. The Entho Pro, Entho Pro sorry, requires the front to be removed first, followed by the top panel. And this case also has the ability to mount fans on the other side of the drive cages, pulling air through uh, the otherwise obstructive and obtrusive uh, drive cages. Not to mention they can also be removed in this case. Whilst this isn't necessary, if you do have any fans laying around or wish to grab a few and are using 3.5 inch mechanical drives, uh, then I recommend using these screws uh, to screw the fans in. Uh, make sure the fans are the right way around, pulling air through the drive and not pushing it against the cages. Please remember that all Amazon links for everything I've already mentioned and everything I will continue to mention will of course be in the description section below. Now it's time for drive uh, for drive installation. Starting off is the SSD. The Kingston Savage SSD, or any SSD for that matter, can be mounted on an SSD sled on the back of the motherboard tray. However, for ease of running data power uh, and uh, data and power cables, sorry, uh, uh, to and from the drive, I will place this in the normal drive cage. Grab your SSD and use these screws, the same uh, that we used with the motherboard. Line the holes up on the bottom of the cage and screw the SSD in. This may seem like somewhat of a waste of space, but if you're not using these cages anyway. Uh, putting it in front of some direct airflow is going to be great uh, just to increase the longevity of your drive. Now it's time for 3.5 inch drives. I'll be using two hard drives, a Barracuda and a uh, Western Judicial Caviar Blue in 1TB capacities, but as I said, head over to part 1 in the card section now to learn more about those. It is as simple as lining the screw holes of the drive up uh, with the white uh, open rings on your cage. Uh, open the wings, clip these in, uh, and you are completely sorted. Remo uh, repeat this step for as many 3.5 inch drives as you have, and you are absolutely golden. Now move uh, the drive uh, sleds into the drive cage, super super self-explanatory and you are sorted. 
Rather than leaving all our wiring to the end, I'm going to do some now. Run all of the three or four pin fan leads uh, through the nearest grommet to the fan and, 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 and to the back panel of the case. This case has a hub at the back, so I'll be using that. Run these, uh, these using the cable management Velcro loops and connect them to the hub. You will need to refer to the manual uh, for the next step, but some of the boards will require you to plug in an auxiliary uh, SATA power cable in order to, um, to properly supplement for any uh, lost power that isn't given out by the four pin fan header on on the motherboard. Now we're going to connect some of the modular power supply cables to the to the unit. Grab two dual 6 plus 2 pin harnesses, uh, one harness for each graphics card. Each harness has uh, two 6 plus 2 pin connectors. Uh, next you are going to want to grab a three-way SATA power harness or more SATA power harnesses depending on the quantity of drives. If you have any uh, spare, not to worry, these aren't going to cause you a problem. Grab one 4 plus 4 pin CPU power harness and finally uh, grab one 20 plus 4 pin motherboard harness. This is the big one. Run the appropriate ends of the cables through the massive grommet, uh, massive grommet by the modular power supply into the back of the motherboard tray. Because it's a modular power supply, everything is fully labeled, so no guesswork is needed here. If it doesn't fit, don't worry, just start again. Now it's time for the motherboard assembly. Take the motherboard and place it on the box it came in. Do not use the bag as this often has static material on the outside to dissipate uh, the static on the inside. Lift the retention arms for the CPU socket up and place the CPU in, lining up the golden triangle on the chip with that on the motherboard. Now remove the black plastic cover and lower the first arm down like so. Secure it under its retention um, little slot kind of bracket thing and lower the second arm also as shown. Now it's RAM time. Four 8GB sticks in this build will populate half of the 8 DIMM slots. For quad channel performance use colour coordinated slots, in this case the grey ones. Installing RAM is easy, pull back the clip or clips, this motherboard only has one, and align the notch with that on the motherboard, applying even pressure to each side. It will click straight in and is once again displayed uh, now. Now we're going to move the motherboard into the case. It may be easier to lie the case flat, uh, but I tend to leave it standing up. Now take the IO shield from the motherboard box like so and clip it to the back of the case. Make sure uh, the orientation is correct. The audio jacks tend to be at the bottom and the labels, of course, need to be read from the outside. Slide the motherboard in, ensuring all the standoffs are pre-installed. Most cases nowadays have that and get these screws and screw one into the middle. You want to screw this in moderately far, but not all the way and you don't want to uh, wrench this tight in. This is simply going to act as a motherboard placeholder, keeping it secure while we screw in the other screws. Some case will have a post already installed uh, to do this job, but if you don't, not to worry, just use a screw. Now add the rest of the screws, tightening each one bit by bit, going round the case uh, a few times in a cross pattern to ensure the motherboard uh, orientation and angles and all that kind of stuff is correct. Now run the 4 plus 4 pin CPU power up through the top left of the case. You may want to do this prior to motherboard installation, but it's just varies on a case-to-case -case basis, and clip it into the board. Now run the big 20 plus 4 pin uh, motherboard power connector through the nearest grommet and plug it in. Go around the back and connect SATA power to all of your drives. You may need to uh, connect more than one harness if you have more drives as I've previously mentioned. Before going any further, I'd like to take 10 seconds of your time to thank XFX for making this build possible, with additional thanks out to Gigabyte and Cooler Master for their support. Uh, these amazing companies really did make this build possible, and if you'd like to get some cheap games, head over to g2a.com forward slash r forward slash geekawatt, link in the description below of course, and remember Amazon links to everything mentioned are in the description. But let's get back to the video. Now it's CPU cooler time. The X99 chipset and platform make this easier than other motherboards uh, with a pre-installed backplate just because it's so high end. Grab these screws and screw them into the board, add these brackets to the CPU cooler and if you are uh, a little bit stuck uh, with CPU install, refer to the manual. CPU cooler installation is easily the most frustrating part of any build, but it just varies on a CPU cooler to cooler basis. Now install the fans to the radiator and screw into the back of the case. Before you apply the rear set of fans closest to the metal uh, ventilation on the case, remember the screws will need to go through the mesh in the case and the assigned slots before they go through the drives and into the radiator. It's going to secure our, um, it's going to secure our uh, radiator in place on the uh, board. 
Add a line of thermal paste around one and a half times to two times the size of a grain of rice. Normally you would just do one grain of rice, uh, but due to the fact that this is a much bigger die and a much bigger CPU, uh, you might want to get a little bit more, but don't overdo it. Remember the thermal paste is there as a binding medium between uh, the copper or whatever surface it is on your uh, CPU cooler or CPU water block and the CPU. You want to allow for efficient transfer of heat, but you don't want to make the layer too thick that it becomes a bottleneck in the build. Grab your uh, your dangling pump from uh, your all-in-one water cooler and screw it into the standoff we installed a moment ago. And breathe. Plug in the two fans from the radiator into the splitter provided by Cooler Master and plug this into the secondary CPU fan header. Plug the pump into the primary header. If you do, however, on your board, uh, have a special board that supports uh, a, a water pump uh, additional CPU fan header, use that and put the two fans on the primary CPU fan header. Now grab your GPU or GPUs and slot these in. It's as simple as pushing back the clip on your motherboard uh, and making sure you remove the appropriate brackets uh, that cover the PCIe slots like so. All you want to do is push these in, apply even force to each side and make sure you use the screws you use to remove the brackets uh, to secure the GPU in place. Make sure you hold the GPU up straight and uh, nice and horizontal uh, to prevent any sagging from the outset. Now get your 6 plus 2 pin harnesses from before and route them through the nearest grommets to your graphics card. Clip the GPUs in and we are completely powered up in that situation. We're almost there now, just a couple more steps. Plug uh, uh, some SATA data cables, these come with your motherboard, make sure to plug uh, each one into the motherboard and each one into your drive. You may want to remember which drive goes to which slot but it doesn't normally matter. Plug in the USB 2 header and one pin is blocked so it will only go in one way and the USB 3 header and this is also keyed. This tends to be the big blue one. Many motherboards have this block thingy to simplify installing your front panel connectors such as power, reset, hard drive, LED and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so just shove it into there and put it onto your motherboard. Next you want to get your HD audio connector uh, which is going to uh, sort out your case's headphone and microphone jacks. This also has a pin blocked out and will only go in one way. And you are done. Screw the side panels back on and you are sorted. Plug it all in and hit the power button and enjoy your new beast of a machine. If you did enjoy this video, I would urge you to subscribe. Once again, a huge thanks particularly uh, to XFX, but also to Caller Master and Gigabyte. Uh, this insane build that I've been dreaming of for so long purely wouldn't have been possible without these amazing companies supporting a smaller YouTuber and channel such as myself. If you really enjoyed this build and you got uh, this far, feel free to donate uh, to the channel using the link in the description below. And whilst donations are never necessary, they're always appreciated and go towards uh, some new equipment and upgrades and that kind of thing. If you want to support me in other ways, once again, grab some cheap games for any platform, including consoles from g2a.com forward slash art forward slash geekawatt. They're cheap and I get a kickback when you buy. You can also use my Amazon affiliate links in the description when you buy any of this stuff uh, which supports me and doesn't cost you a penny. Most importantly, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Drop a like rating, follow my Twitter at geekawatt for all of the latest behind the scenes news, reviews and all that good stuff. But I've been James Cousins and I'll see you in the next Geek Co-op video.